Here today I have a set of 15 Posca pen markers. Posca pens are currently one of the most popular paint markers out there, but they are also one of the hardest to find, especially in the United States. Today we're going to see how Posca pens compare to Arteza's acrylic paint markers. So Arteza recently just came out with this, um, it's a 40 set of acrylic paint markers. Um, like I said, it's pretty new. I've only used it maybe a couple of times, but I kind of got interested in seeing how they would compare to Posca pens. As you can see, this set comes with quite a bit of colors. Um, I believe there is another set that you can get, but I just got the smallest one just in case I didn't like them or they weren't as good. First and foremost, I will say I don't love the packaging because it's that really cheap um, plastic packaging that will slice your fingers off if you try to open it and cutting it with scissors is just about impossible. I mean, it does help because it has a little pull tab, but it's, it's still kind of a pain. So pulling out a random marker. This is Arteza acrylic marker in the color Sapphire Blue. It's water-based ink. It looks just like a paint marker. I mean, the nib looks pretty big. I already have marker on my finger. Lovely. The nib looks pretty decent in size. Taking a look at the packaging, we see that these markers come in a set of 40 bright colors. They are quick drying, low odor ink, water-based, UV resistant, blendable, and acid-free. And I'm really curious to see how that blendability works because I know that Posca pens don't blend out super well. So I'm very curious to know how these work. Um, it also advertises that they come with replaceable tips, which I find very interesting because not many markers, even just markers in general, like not even talking about paint markers, most markers in general don't come with replaceable tips. So that's pretty interesting. For this pack, I believe I paid about $40. They were on sale on Amazon, so I think regularly they run about $50 for this set, but they were on sale, so I did get these ones for $40. There are quite a bit of different colors. Seems like a lot of blue though, a lot of blues and greens really, but looking at these both together, it seems almost like you can tell that the Arteza is cheaper because it's smaller um, and it's not as brightly colored as the Posca pen, but I mean, we don't know that for sure. We haven't tried it yet. So let's swatch these and see how they stack up to each other. I went ahead and I swatched the Posca pens. So Mainly we're gonna be focusing on the 15 count that I have. Um, when I did purchase these, I bought these about a year and a half ago and I bought them on Amazon. When I bought them, they came in a pack of 29. Um, so this is all of the 29 colors, as you can see. It's that classic smooth color, not too streaky. There are some colors that are a little streaky, but, but for the most part, they are pretty good. Um, and they do come with a gold and a silver, which is quite nice, even with the 29 markers. I feel that color variation is not great here. Um, there's a lot of pastel colors and not a whole lot of reds, it seems like, or purples. I mean, there's a couple, but there's, in comparison to like how many blues there are, there's not a whole ton. So here are all 40 of the Arteza acrylic markers. Um, there's a lot more color variation with this pack, obviously, because there's more markers. But I also feel like these colors are maybe a little bit brighter. A lot of them are pretty streaky. I don't know if that's just because it's the first time the markers have been used really, or if they are like that, but I guess we will find out as we do the drawing. This one does come with silver, gold, and bronze, which is actually kind of neat because you don't really get bronze in a whole lot of marker packs, but I think that that's a really cool color and I'm kind of glad that they included that. You also get a line of fluorescent colors which is also very nice um, for adding those bright pops of colors to your pieces. I did mention that Arteza came with uh, the replaceable nibs. So as you can see here, it comes with a variety of chisel nibs and bullet nibs that you can replace out of your marker. I'm not sure if you can rinse these out and reuse them. I don't know if these are single use only, but I do think it's pretty cool that they provide different nibs for you to use and you're not just stuck with the one fat bullet nib that they provide. They also provided tweezers to help you pull out the nib without making a giant mess. It does come with two packs. It seems that there's just mostly chisel and bullet nibs. 
Um, but still, that's that's more than you could ask for, I think. So I am quite curious to see how these two will stack up to each other in a similar drawing. Um, obviously, I'm just going to use similar colors from each pack. Since there are more Arteza markers than there are Poscas, I'm going to try to keep it as equal as possible, but I am interested to see if the cheaper Arteza alternative is better than Posca pens. So without further ado, let's find out. Okay, so to start us off, we are starting with the Posca pen markers. Um, I wanted to create kind of a colorful sky gradient for both of the drawings that I was doing. Um, so I started with the sky and many of you know that Posca pens do not blend out very well. So my plan was to create a gradient um, by sort of creating a optical illusion and kind of blending the colors together without really blending them. You'll, you'll see in a minute what I mean. So I'm going in with um, several different sky sunset gradient colors. Um, I'm trying to get the sunset to look um, almost not realistic. I'm not really going for a realistic drawing here. I'm going for colorful and something that pops and something that catches your eye. I will say that the Posca pens worked very well. Um, they paint flowed smoothly. Um, I didn't really have any problems with, with the pens at all. They were really great. The nibs were just fine. They were comfortable to hold. Um, I, I've never really had any complaints about Posca pens and I'm definitely not starting here. They worked really well for this piece. I will say that my white pen didn't work as well. So starting here, you can see me using the gradient um, method that I was talking about where you just kind of put each color into each other and then it kind of creates the optical illusion to make it look like it's actually blending together without it really blending together. I found that this worked the best um, and it actually turned out really good. I really liked the result that it gave and made it a little bit more unique. Um, I don't see people doing this so often. Um, I've seen a YouTuber or two do it before, but it's not very common, at least from what I have seen. Um, so I'm finishing up doing the sky here, um, just kind of adding the final details and making sure everything looks blended and looks good um, and creating that sort of sunsetty effect. But into the markers, again, I mean, they still, they worked great. They were super opaque. Um, the color, even though the color choices were pretty small, I found that it really wasn't even a problem for me. I still was able to create um, a nice piece with limited colors and I still think that it came out really well. Um, going into the mountains here, um, I'm just kind of filling it in with a basic blue and then doing some drop shadows with a navy blue. Um, later on, I, I kind of cover this up because I feel like it didn't create the effect that I quite wanted it to. Um, I wanted to appear as though it was casting shadows on the mountain behind it, but it didn't really work out that way. So I think I kind of went over it um, with a different color and kind of gave up on the idea as a whole. Looking at that mountain that's closest to us, you can even see that. I mean, it, it looks a little bit streaky, but it still doesn't lose its opaqueness. It still looks really good. Coming into here, I was trying to create an effect of clouds in between the mountains, um, but I figured that I could try to do this by um, putting some of the paint into a little reusable paint palette, um, mixing it with water, and then trying to mix them on the paper to create the cloud effect. It didn't work out as great as I would have hoped. I guess I can't really be mad at it either because it was acrylic, not watercolor. Um, I didn't expect it to be great, but it did give a good effect at the end. I think that it looked really good how it turned out. It wasn't, like I said, what I had wanted originally, but I think it adds a little bit of pop to the piece and it adds a little more color to the bottom half and it looks really nice. So here I'm going in doing like the bushes in front of the mountains. Um, it's supposed to be like a like a looking out into a valley type of deal. And I was adding some like berries on there for, for just a little bit more color, trying to make it look like bushes. Um, at the end, it, it kind of just looks like a mess of color. But I mean, if you look far away and you squint, it looks okay. <laughs> um, 
So I'm just adding more color in to try to make it look a little bit better, try to make it pop. Um, like I said, there weren't a whole lot of color variation with this. I just kind of did my best with what I had. Here I'm going in, like I said, with, I'm kind of getting rid of that drop shadow a little bit and I'm adding a little bit of light onto the top of the mountains to try to create a better effect. Um, I actually really like how this turned out. I didn't expect much of it when I started, but I very enjoyed the outcome of this. I think that it made the whole piece come together as a whole. And here we have the finished Posca pen piece. Um, I really liked the colors on this one and I think that it turned out great. So now it's time to get started on the Arteza piece. So here I'm starting on the Arteza piece, um, kind of going in the same concept, trying to use similar colors. There were a lot more colors in this set, almost double of what I had in Posca pens. Um, so I'm trying to go in with similar colors, but Weirdly enough, they didn't have as similar colors to Posca's. Um, I thought, you know, with more color variation, they would be definitely similar colors and I could use it to my advantage, but trying to find similar colors within the set was actually pretty difficult and I did end up having to use just my best judgment on what I could consider similar colors. But going in with the sky, I'm doing the exact same thing I did with the Posca pens. Um, I'm just kind of putting in those colors. I will go in, I will start gradiating it, and I don't think that was a word. Gradiating? I don't know. Anyways, um, so I'm going in, filling in the sky, blocking it off as good as I can. Um, I'm just kind of going with my best judgment on these colors, like I said. So I'm going in, starting to do the gradient. Um, just blending in those colors as best as I can. Here we have the nib. Um, that's like the skinnier nib. I, sh I showed that there you could do replacement nibs. Um, so I replaced them with the skinnier ones to try to get smaller lines to get a better gradient. Um, this actually worked really well and replacing the nibs was actually very easy. Um, I don't know if they were reusable. I did not even think to rinse them out and like see how that worked, but they worked really well. Um, they were a bit squishy and kind of hard to control at first, but once you kind of figure out how they work, they're pretty easy to work with. I did want to talk about um, Arteza. The color was fine. A lot of the colors, especially the lighter ones, were a bit streaky. Um, I'm not really sure why. I don't know if it was just the paint color itself or the type of paint that they used, or maybe it was the nib. I have no idea, but like the very light pink at the top in that kind of lighter orangey color in the middle was really streaky. I did do my best to kind of take that streakiness away, but it was very difficult to deal with. Overall though, the Arteza's actually worked pretty well. Um, like I said, with so many colors, it was kind of weird to work with because it, they didn't even have similar colors to Posca's, um, which was very weird for me, but um, I did my best. I did have to make the mountains more of a purpley color because they didn't have similar colors like the blue for whatever reason. They only really had like the light blues um, and like one dark blue. So I kind of had to do my best with it. Um, I still think that it turned out really good. So going in, I'm kind of making the mountain shapes a little bit different. I'm trying to keep it as similar as possible, but I'm also trying to have fun with this, um, just seeing what I can create and how these different variations can affect the overall piece. Um, so I kind of did some more spacing with the mountains here. I went over the top with a lighter purple to try to accomplish that blue effect that I did on the Posca piece. It didn't work out as well as I really wanted it to, but I fix it all at the end, so it's okay. 
and I'm going in here with the drop shadow kind of effect. I decided to try it again on this one. Um, I think it worked a little bit better on this piece than it did with the Posca pens. I'm not really sure why, I just think that it, this looks a little bit better. As you can see, um, I was kind of testing the blendability of these markers and using the markers together, they seemed to kind of blend in okay. Um, they really promised blendability on the packaging, but it didn't work quite well. Here's me trying to struggle with the white Arteza marker, which was very difficult to get ink out of. Um, the Posca pens were really easy to get the ink out of to use. The Artezas, though, I struggled with a whole lot, even taking the nibs out to just try to get the paint to go into the palette. Um, it was very difficult to use. Um, so I started to put them down with a paintbrush and just a little bit watered down and Here's where you can see where it loses its opaqueness. Um, I understand that it's gonna do that with water, but I didn't put a whole lot of water in it and it just, it still didn't do as well as the Posca pens in this aspect. And I know that's not what it's for, but I was kind of hoping that it would work the same. It didn't, so I was a little disappointed there. The colors blended together pretty weird, I think. It just kind of gave off a weird effect. There was a weird texture to it. I don't know that I'll do this again with the Arteza markers. I would probably use this again with Posca pens, but not with the Artezas. So I'm just going in and adding some final textures. I'm just trying to make it look a little bit better. At this point in the piece, I wasn't very happy with it. So I was trying to do that old, you know, that thing where you're like, if I just keep going, it might get better. I might ruin it, but it might also get better. And I'm already too far into this to start over. So, so, Going back into the clouds, trying to touch them up, make them look a little bit better. I did end up making them look decent, I guess. Um, they don't look as good as the Posca ones, but they they work for what it is. I Overall, I like these markers. I don't think that they're as good as Posca's. I think that they are a very good, cheap alternative. I think that they are great if you are just starting out and you are just learning. In the end, I think that these are markers that are good for beginners. Um, if you are getting serious about marker art, I would definitely say spend the money on Posca pens because they do provide a really good and clean and crisp piece as a whole, if that's what you're going for. Um, they actually blend a lot better than the Arteza markers did, even though the Arteza markers promised blendability and Posca markers don't, they still delivered on that over the Artezas. I mean, the Artezas blended together, but not in the way that I would have expected. So here are the final results. Over on the right side, we have the artwork done in Posca pen, and over on the left, we have the artwork done in Arteza. The color on the Posca pen is definitely brighter than that of the Arteza markers, but with the Arteza markers, we were able to use a lot more colors and have a lot more variety in color scheme. Although I do really like the simplicity of the Posca pen um, artwork. I think that it just, it pops more and it looks like it was meant to overall look like this, whereas the Arteza looks like it's been over blended, layered too much, and overall I think it just looks a bit more messy than the Posca art. But I like the way that both of them turned out. They're both very similar, but they're also both very different in their own ways. I feel like Arteza is trying too hard with them saying that their markers are blendable because even when I tried to blend them down here with a paintbrush, it was still very difficult to even get the colors to merge together. And as you can see, they still didn't blend. Whereas even though Posca doesn't claim to be blendable, they still blended pretty well over here, so I'm conflicted. I think for what it is, Artezas are a really, really good cheap alternative to Posca pens. If you're not quite sure if you're gonna like how this goes or if you'll even be interested in markers and you don't wanna spend a ton of money, I definitely would say Arteza is the way to go. I think that they're good for the price and I think that they are a good introduction to markers like Poscas, which are more expensive and a little bit more difficult to obtain. I do highly recommend these. Oh so yeah, 
that was a little experiment. I think we can see overall that Posca looks a little bit better, um, but Arteza definitely came through with providing a similar feel to Posca pins. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. I try to come out with new videos every Wednesday or so, but with everything going on in the world, it is a little bit difficult. So I am doing my best, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.